The South Sydney Rabbitohs are arguably the biggest rugby league club in the world. They've won more premierships than any other team, they've got one of the largest fan bases in the NRL, and thanks to their owner Russell Crowe, they're one of Australia's most recognisable sports franchises on the international stage. This is a club who are one of only two remaining teams from the original 1908 New South Wales Rugby League. This is a club who have had the likes of Clive Churchill, Ron Coote, John Sattler, Sam Burgess and Wayne Bennett in the building. This is a club majority owned by a $20 billion tech CEO that you've probably never heard of. The South Sydney Rabbitohs are too big to fail, but despite in recent history continuing to preach that they're an exceptional club, Souths have well and truly fallen into mediocrity. They finished seventh and ninth in the regular season over the last two years, and at the time of recording, they find themselves rock bottom of the NRL ladder five rounds into the season. Their record-breaking collapse of last season has carried into this year, with the club now having won only five of their last 19 games. The media have been relentless in publishing story after story, blaming anyone and everyone involved at the Rabbitohs for what has happened. But they seem to be genuinely at a loss as to what caused this. How did we get here? What has gone wrong at the South Sydney Rabbitohs? When I sat down to plan a video for this week, it was either going to be on the Rabbitohs or the Roosters, with both clubs having had particularly disappointing rounds, and in fact, both sides having been particularly disappointing for a couple of years now. When it's spoken about with the Roosters though, the media always tend to highlight the leadership that they've lost in recent seasons, with the likes of Cooper Cronk, Boyd Cordner, Jake Friend and the Morris Twins having retired over the last five years. But I think that excuse applies just as much to South Sydney and I can't understand why it hasn't been pinpointed as an issue. In that same time frame, the Rabbitohs have lost the leadership of Sam Burgess, Tom Burgess, Chon Sutton, Greg Inglis, Dane Gagai, Wayne Bennett as a coach, and of course, the most notable case, Adam Reynolds. Reynolds was let go by South Sydney after the club refused to offer him an extension of more than one year, despite outrage from their fans. The club didn't want to take a risk that his body wouldn't hold up beyond just one season. That was in 2021. Since that time, Reynolds has moved to the Brisbane Broncos, made a grand final, and is seen as one of the premier halves in the game. In fact, he's done such a good job of ushering in this new generation of Broncos that the club decided to extend him for another year into what will be his fourth season at the club. That's the calibre of leadership that South Sydney have lost. But then there's the other side of the leadership coin. Who remained at the club to lead? The four senior figures that were left were Cameron Murray, Damian Cook, Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell. Now Cameron Murray is the perfect poster boy for Souths. He's a local junior, he's well spoken, he's a natural leader and he gives his absolute all for the club every time he puts on the jersey. But while Murray is the captain, by all accounts, and God knows there's many of them coming out in the media, it's actually Cody and Latrell who drive the culture of the club. Now, I'm not going to disparage the characters of these two guys. God knows there's enough of that going on at the moment. And I will say that one of my most positive memories of following rugby league as a kid was in 2016 when Latrell Mitchell responded to a DM that I sent him. It meant the absolute world to a 13 year old me to hear back from one of my sporting heroes. But I will say this. Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell are two of the most naturally gifted players that we've seen in this generation. They're the kind of players that can have twice as much output as everyone else while doing half the work. They're good to have in your club, but the moment that they start driving the culture, it becomes a massive problem. The moment your standards are set by guys who don't need to work hard to have success, you get the picture. And no matter how many highlight reel moments Latrell has produced since arriving at the club, the cold hard truth is that he's let his teammates down too many times since joining the Rabbitohs. Whether it be the completely unnecessary elbow into the head of Sean Johnson for his current suspension, or the elbow into the back of the head of Tyson Frizzell at the end of last year which saw him miss the final round showdown with the Roosters, or even going back to his most infamous incident which is a high shot that broke the cheekbone of Joey Manu. That tackle saw him rubbed out for the rest of the 2021 season and I truly believe that it cost South Sydney a premiership. I watched that 2021 grand final and I really do think that if Latrell Mitchell were at fullback instead of Blake Taff, 
Souths win that game. Now it is purely hypothetical, but winning a premiership means everything to these guys. They must surely look back on a tackle like that and think, well, if you didn't do that, who knows? Latrella has waxed lyrical for years about how much he wants to be a leader, and how passionate he is about mentoring younger guys and being a role model to them. But the harsh truth is that you can't go out and do youth work in Moree during the week and then elbow a guy in the head on live TV on the weekend. That's not what role models do. Those situations though can be handled by the better coaches in the game. Coaches who know when to set a player free and when to pull the reins tighter. A good example of that is with a guy like Cameron Munster, who is a bit of a loose cannon, who is prone to the occasional brain snap, but coach Craig Bellamy keeps him on a short leash and that's exactly how they have consistent success. Again, I'm not inside the four walls of the Rabbitohs, but from what I've seen of Jason Demetrio, he doesn't seem like the kind of coach who would do that. He seems more like the kind of coach who would keep his players on a pretty loose leash and let them stay there. A prime example of that was an inside story that broke out of South Sydney last week. During a team meeting, Demetrio announced his nominations for the Jason Clark Award. The award is chosen by the players for a moment that showed courage and resilience. One of his nominated moments was a tackle that Lachelle Mitchell put on Josh Adokar a couple of weeks ago. A tackle that was illegal, that left Adokar concussed. Club legend Alex Johnston stood up and questioned why a tackle like that was being promoted and encouraged, to which Demetrio defended the tackle and praised Latrell for the effort to get over there and make it. In a moment when Demetrio had an opportunity to admit a mistake and praise Johnson for demanding accountability from the club's big names, he chose not to. I ask you JD, when your club runs out every week and it's the same old story, how can you be surprised? Look, talent will win you games, that's definitely true, and in fact more times than not it will be enough to get you into the finals. But the tried and tested adage of Rugby League is that defence wins premierships. Defence being the half of the game that isn't fun, that you only get better at by working harder than everybody else. I ask you, is it a coincidence that after 5 rounds South Sydney have the worst defence in the NRL by a whopping 32 points? Souths will not get to where they want to be if they continue like this. It will not click. It will not turn around. A fundamental shift in attitude and approach is required. Are they prepared to make that change? Time will tell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.